Welcome for this talk. So the title is uh, Manage Your Form State Easily with Redux Form, which I realize is a super lame title because it says no pun or anything. It's really hard to find a pun with Redux Form. Uh, if you have any idea, you can come talk to me after the talk. So that's a form. Um, a form where largely a solve problem a while ago, like you had your form in HTML on front end and you had some complex backends. Some data is sent from the form to your backend, you treat it, you send back a new page with whatever you want to. Nowadays, we are using uh, complex JS apps, like with big JS front end framework. And there's a lot more expectation regarding user experience. Uh, you need to react in real time to what the user inputs in your form. You need to do some validation in real, in real time. And all of that is really not that easy because uh, forms are inherently stateful. That means like uh, at any point you want to access the state of your form. What is the state of your form? It can be the set of values that are input in each of the field. Um, but there's also more metadata. There's the whole, uh, has this form been touched? Is it dirty? Is it being submitted? Has a submission failed? A lot of things that you don't know you need them, all this information, until you do need them. And so very quickly, you end up uh, asking yourself, where should I store all of this state? And as you can guess, the answer will come very soon. Um, so the, in the context of a React app, the very first reflex you might have is to store all of that in a stateful form component. That kind of makes sense. But you very soon end up in the usual hell of stateful form, I mean of, in general, stateful components, which is uh, you need to pass down the state from the component that holds the state down to the component that uses the state. And if you want to update this state, this state, sorry, um, you end up needing to pass callback from this component holding the state down to this one. And this one will call the callback to bubble up the state update. That's a very generic problem, actually. Um, that's actually exactly the problem that Redux solves. Redux gives you this uh, store thing that uh, allows you to directly write in the store and everything will tr like, uh, trickle down to all the, like, all the updates will trickle down to the components directly without this kind of callback or this kind of props that needs to be passed down. And that's very nice. Um, in the context of, sp of uh, forms, in s specifically forms, uh, there's a lot of stuff that you will want to do that Redux form handles for you. So, in general, what is Redux form? Redux form is a library that allows you to abstract the form state management using Redux, particularly in the context of React apps, but not necessarily. So I put some vanity metrics here to show that um, Redux form is quite mature library. It's uh, well maintained. There are regular releases, like the GitHub issues are answered to. It's documented. Like, it's pretty nice. They even have a Twitter, which is always a good sign, a good sign that a library is serious. Um, in one word, Redux form, what does it do? It allows your form state to live in your Redux store. I put some words in bold here so that you don't have to read too much. Um, okay, what does that mean exactly? Do you see some stuff? Yes. So here I have a very simple app that suspiciously looks like Phoebe's one. React, create React app is around there. Um, so what do we have here? We have here a field all alone. Here a thing that will just display some part of the state for it's easier to read. And I will open the dev tools. So if we look at our dev tools, we see here a form key. And inside that, we see an awesome form key. And inside that, we see some more stuff happening. Let's check the code of all of that to understand what it means. Um, so on the left here, you have uh, 
the code of our app. It's really simple. We show the a form and then the state thing. We don't really care about that. In our form, we just display a field. So there's two things you need to notice here. It's this Redux form here and this field here. Both of those come from Redux form. Um, Redux form provides a Redux form higher order component that will wrap your components and make it a form handled by Redux form. And field, this component here, uh, is also provided by Redux form, it's imported here, and it will make your field managed by Redux form. In practice, what does that mean? That means that just by declaring it like that, so field, we give it a render prop here, component, here we'll just render a simple HTML input, a name, we'll call it search, and whatever props that will be passed down to the render prop, it will render all that for you, and it will manage it. So managing it means that as soon as you start using it, you have a lot of information about the state. Just by clicking on it, I have some information. So this is basically displaying uh, some part of the state here. It's just easier to read. Uh, you, have, um, you have some information about the state of your form and the state of your fields. You know that this search field has been visited and that it's currently active. And at the form level, you know that which field is active. So that's already interesting. I basically didn't do anything and I have access to the information. When I type, when I start typing into this, uh, this form, uh, I see that I get some more information, probably the most valuable, which is the values that are actually in my form, and that those information are updated in real time. So it's pretty cool. That means that um, having access to all of that, I can just, from any part of my application, I can just select all of this information and do whatever I want with those. How does this, um, those state updates happen? It's like the standard way of updating the state in uh, Redux through actions. If you pay attention here, a lot of things happen. We can see uh, a focus here, a change here, a lot of changes actually. And if I blur the field, if I find my mouse here, if I blur the field, I have a blur action. That's how Redux form works. It maps some, um, like it triggers some actions when you use your field. Okay, um, so I told you, you ha we have that in the form. How do we actually use all of those? all of those information. We can very quickly um, write a simple use case for all of that. Oh. So um, I need to put down the mic because I have around 10 seconds of live coding. I'll just talk really loud. Um, I can't see anything, obviously. Okay, so you can see uh, not much has changed. I just display a list of, of uh, programming languages here, and I will want to make my search inputs a filter of this list. We'll see how simple that is with Redux form. So uh, if we check our code, we're just displaying a list here in addition to what we already had. And if we check this list, what's in there, we have a fake selector here. It doesn't actually fetch his data from the state, but it mocks it, so that's good enough. We have our list component that takes a languages prop and that uh, displays it as a list, very simple. And finally, what we export is a connected version of that where we get the languages from the state and we return it. So we provide this prop to our component. How do we make a filter for this list? with our search input. It's really simple. Um, the first thing we need is really the value that is in the input. And Redux form gives us here a selector that allows you to get some field data from any form. So if we're using that, we can get the value of the field uh, from value selector. The first thing we need to give them is the um, 
name of the form. So that's what we had here. It's some kind of unique identifier for our form. I don't see much. OK, it will. And then we give, the, we give it the state and the name of the field we want to select. Uh, I call it search. OK, so I have access to my, uh, to my search value, which is what's in the field. And here, I just need to filter those languages. Tick. And I will only keep the one that contains whatever I input in my field. OK, did that work? OK, my list disappeared. If I type in, I have some things that reappear. So for example, if I type all of this kind of stuff, it seemed to work. I just don't have that, field, that uh, list when I have nothing in because I'm not handling this particular edge case. So just by handling that properly, all of that should work. Uh, OK, cool. So here I have my list. And if I type in, it should be properly filtered. OK, that works. So that's pretty cool. I um, really didn't add much code. I added just this filter here, which is basic logic. I, and I added this selector here and some kind of edge case here. So really, by doing not much, we have a real-time filter over, over a list, over a table, over whatever you want. Let's go back to the slide. Let's compare um, how we would have handled all of that uh, using a stateful component and how we did using Redux form. So if we want to access some form data from uh, any new application, um, if you have a stateful component, you will need to pass those, like some prop down from your component holding the state down to the component using it. So that's what we call props drilling because you have to go through any intermediate components. Uh, using, free, using Redux form, we just use selectors and connect. Our state lives in this Redux store and uh, the component is just self-contained and fetches the data it, it needs. Uh, if you want to write some form data with a stateful component, we need to pass some callback props. It's very, very messy. It's quickly hard to maintain, and I'd rather avoid that. Using Redux form, we can just dispatch actions, which is a standard way of doing that. All in all, it allows you to make sure your state management is handled by Redux and not the component. And that's really nice because that's what Redux is made for. And uh, it keeps your UI descriptive, like the code of your UI descriptive and rather than imperative. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's one bit that you need to understand to understand how Redux form works. It's this field magic. This component here, what does it actually do? So we give it a component, which is a render prop. We give it a name, and you can give it any additional props that will be passed to, the, to this component. Because what field does is that it renders your, your, render, your render prop. That makes sense. And mostly, it gives it two new props. It gives it an input prop and a meta prop. In input, you get um, those five values here, those five, uh, yeah, those five properties. Unchange, unblur, unfocus, value, and name. So value is the current value of the field. Unchange is a function to dispatch an unchange action, so to write in the store. Unblur, let's start with unfocus. Unfocus makes your field active. It also dispatches an action to, so that the fact that your field is active is in the store, and unblur makes it inactive. Um, and in meta, you have a bit more information about your about the state of your field. It gives you, is your field currently in error? Like, if you have some validation on it. Uh, has your field been touched? Has it been uh, visited? Has it, like, is it dirty? A lot of information of this kind, very useful. That means most important is input here. And it's written in such a way that you can just destructure it 
in a standard input HTML element and just like call it a day because um, that will work out of the box. The name prop will be matched to the name prop of the input, the unchange, the unblur, the unfocus. All of that will be nicely handled and when you type in your input, the correct actions will be dispatched. But that also allows you to write some custom components, some custom inputs, and that's really where Redux form shines. Um, let's go through a simple example. But um, obviously, Okay, so here I have a custom component, a custom field, a custom input, whatever you want to call it, um, that is just a value and a button. In the sense, like, it's not an input in the HTML sense. There's no input in there. It's directly defined in my, uh, in my form. So here I gave it a custom, uh, I still have my field with a name, and I gave it a custom component here where I just display the value and I just have a simple button with an on-click prop that will increment the value of my component by calling the unchange. Uh, so from an HTML standpoint, it's really not an input, but from a Redux form standpoint, it's definitely an input. We have this value here in our, value, in our Redux form part of the state. And if I click on this button, it increments and this value changes. So from the point of view of a Redux form, it's definitely just, uh, just as much an, an input as a real input tag. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you can build very complex fields. Uh, how did I call that? List? No, I did not. You can build this kind of stuff where we have a dynamic number of fields that can appear, that can disappear that themselves contains a dynamic subfields, number of subfields. So for example here, uh, if I wrote some stuff, this is JavaScript and I'm adding some tooling, for example, React. React is a, uh, I don't see anything here, framework. Uh, I can add Redux, blah, blah, blah. And all of that appears here in our part of the, of the state. And we can see we have a shape of the state that's actually quite complex. And we can really structure our form state as we want and select any part of it. So, and you can build that very quickly, it's very useful. You have a lot of tools that are included in Redux form to do that. Okay. Um, to select all of those, uh, like all of these states that, that is made accessible by Redux form, Redux form gives you a lot of selectors to select those parts of the state, we, not manually, but through, like, through selectors that are available in Redux form. Uh, you have some simple ones, like get forms value, but you can also know if a form is dirty, is it, it's valid, if it's um, being submitted, if the submission has failed or succeeded, all this kind of stuff that's very useful and that works out of the box, you don't have to implement anything. Um, even more interesting, you can have you have a bunch of action creators. So uh, that allows you to interact with your form programmatically. That means that from anywhere in your code, you can just dispatch actions and it will affect your form. Um, so for example, here we can see our blur action, a change action that will allow you from anywhere, uh, from a component, from a thunk, from a saga, to change the value of a field. You can clear your fields, focus one, submit your form, uh, touch a field. You can do pretty much whatever you want. You can really go crazy. Um, and I actually did, went crazy. I prepared you a small demo that is not that small. I spent way, way too much time on that. <laughs> um, here it is. So, this is only, this is just one saga that is dispatch, dispatching some actions, one after the other. Uh, so a saga is just, I don't, I don't want to enter into much detail, but a saga just allows you to dispatch some action in a very controlled way. So I will dispatch some action to interact with my form. Uh, 
and to s simulate in a way our our user interaction. So you can see you can just programmatically fill in blurs. That's not videos, just action being dispatches. You can say them up here. Actually, you can't because it's not scrolled down, is it? Um, you can trigger some validation. You can reset your field, add some like new value in your array fields. Um, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even know what to say. I spent one too much time once again. Um, so yeah, all in all, you can reset completely your form with whatever value you want, and in the end, you can just submit your form. This is what you get when you submit your form. So those are the values you access when your form is submitted, what you will send to wherever you, you submit it. So you have a very fine-grained control over your form, and that's pretty cool, pretty useful. OK, so there's um, a few limitations and gotchas. So let's start with the limitations. The first one is that there's no field level initial value. There's no way in Redux form that I am aware of to say, uh, for example, all number field have an initial value of zero, or all date field have an initial value of uh, today. It's just no way of saying that. You have to say in your form, specify uh, in this form, this field has this initial value. It's, it's a bit of a pain, but you can walk around that. It's still worth it. And to be honest, that's pretty much it. Um, <laughs> you can do whatever you want with this form. I've never entered in any never encountered any other limitations than this one. Uh, you can set some initial values from your form. You can reinitialize it. You can do some field validation, some form validation. You can validate synchronously or asynchronously. Uh, you can validate on change. You can validate on blur, on submit, wherever you want. You can map your back-end errors on your front-end errors. You can control when you want to submit, how you want to submit. It's very, very powerful. And the first gotcha is that there's no implicit initial value. If I uh, go back to my, where was it? My complex field example. Here, it can be very tricky. I'm adding one language and one tool. Here, you see my form is empty, basically. Like this tooling part of the form is completely empty. Uh, there's no value anywhere. Like this makes sense because this is empty. It's never been touched. This is empty, it has never been touched. But this, like, it's not empty, clearly. The library is selected, but doesn't appear here. So maybe the user will submit it at the end, and uh, what you will get is undefined. It's not library. It's some kind of inconsistency between HTML and uh, Redux form. So be careful with that. Uh, make sure to initialize your forms. Uh, do not unmount fields, like, do not hide your fields and make them reappear, do some like React magic to do this kind of stuff. It's not a lot of reason to do that, but if you do, uh, you might lose some validation of your field because they will be unregistered and re-registered by Redux form, and for some reason, like the validation gets fucked up. It's really, it's really a, it's a lot of pain and really hard to debug. And finally, um, that's not Redux form specific, that's in general, uh, forms are hard. Keep your form logic really as simple as you can. Don't get crazy in uh, your form validation, in your business rules. Um, just keep your form as simple as you can because you can very quickly make your own edge case, like play, play against yourself by uh, trying to make some fields interact with each other or go with crazy validation rules that actually don't work and trying to be smart about when errors are shown to the user, and in the end, it doesn't work, and you have a mess of code to debug. It's really a pain. Um, in conclusion, Redux form avoids a lot of boilerplate because there's a, like, it does a lot of stuff that you would need to develop yourself. Like uh, it, avoids you, it avoids you this callback hell, this props drilling. Um, does basically all the state management for you, and that's really nice. So dev time just melts away. 
it still asks for a bit of experience, not that much, to be honest, but um, to really understand how it works and how to quickly and cleanly build new inputs, for example, some custom inputs. It's just, you need a bit of time to fiddle with it, to play with it, to be perfectly at ease. Uh, there's some good documentation, and that's a really good point. Uh, everything is documented. You have some examples in the official documentation that are really useful. There's also a lot of GitHub issues that are answered to, uh, like a lot of people trying to do stuff and um, are not sure what is the good practice to do it. So don't hesitate to go on the GitHub issues and to look for what you're trying to do. You might have some good answers. And uh, I'm not pressing the right button. Okay, it became de facto a standard at Theodore, so that's the company I work for. Uh, we are a service company, and so we have like dozens of clients over the years. Um, and it just, yeah, I said it just melts away the dev time. It allows you to build very quickly some prototypes, it, but it's still production ready. It's very robust. Uh, there's little magic. So all in all, it's a very good, uh, a very good library. And that's it for Redux 4. Thank you all for listening to me rambling about that. <laughs>